All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. Today we're going to be going over a very specific scene which is tricky or which can be tricky if you are not prepared for it. And that is the bus or public transport. And I know on Patreon we did this not too long ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we looked specifically at bus scenes, lots of different solutions, lots of different looks you can go with, lots of different choices to make. But this just cruising around on the internet, I found this commercial and I hadn't seen this solution. And we didn't even go over in the in the Patreon, the extended breakdown. We didn't even go over this particular solution. So I thought I would share it here because it's an interesting way to tackle a really challenging or what can be a challenging situation for cinematographers. Buses, they're limited in size. There's not a lot of angles. You only have so much flexibility, whether you go VFX out the windows or you have to go natural, then time of day, all these solutions or all these problems, I should say need solutions. And it's interesting how this commercial did it. So we're going to have a look and maybe talk about some other things as we go. But this is the ad. We're just going to roll through it. Guy gets phone number from girl or girl does phone number. Uh, none of this really matters for our purposes. This is just the ad. We roll through it and then we're going to come to our little bus section here, right there. That look, nice looking shot, beautiful looking shadows, nice fall off in the background. And then more phone call stuff. This is all, it's all really frameworky. this ad. Maybe we'll talk about this last scene as well. Uh, but we'll see how we go for time. Okay, let's go back to the bus, right? Now, this is a tricky situation. Why is it tricky? Because the bus is moving, right? And let's say, just for our example here, that this is not visual effects. Let's say that this is actually on the road moving. The thing that you want to be most concerned about when you're dealing with limited budgets or the challenges are going to be whatever is out here, out this window. This is going to be what you have to deal with inside, right? Because you cannot control what is out these windows. You see how down it is over there? Actually, it could just be grayed though, bringing that way, way down. Uh, you want to be concerned about what is outside those windows because if it's getting front lit, it's going to be significantly hotter in the background. And that means the only reason that that's a problem is number one, it's all going to be one level because it's just going to be front lit. There's not going to be any edges like you get with backlight. You know, if this was, if the sun was back here and this wasn't an overcast day, you'd have this edge running down the tree and then this would be dark and then you'd have, you know, edge on the building and the, the building itself would be dark. So it just creates, and then you would have edge on old man head, edge maybe on like shoulder in here if the sun was coming in this way. There's just ways to pick it up. Whereas if this is all front lit, it just is going to be just one level. And we know from all of the breakdowns that if you don't have the interest of contrast, if the dark, the light, you don't have uh, those two things together, it becomes really boring and it's hard to make it look three dimensional. So the more depth, the more interest that the shot um, brings to the table. And that's what we're going for, right? This interest. So a lot of the times you'll see on, on bus stuff that or train stuff or anything with these windows, public transport stuff, is you're going to park the person closest to the window, right? Because that's where you can do the most things. You can do the most depth wise this way. If you shoot, like just say, this is our man here instead of this guy. This is the man that we're going to shoot. We're immediately shooting into the shadow because we're shooting from the row out to the windows, right? So half the framework done. As long as you get the time of day and the path of the bus, right? The, the background shouldn't really matter because you can get that backlit. So you're going to get a little edge on here. And then what you would do in the bus is if you're shooting, you know, camera here, looking this way for our close up, or let's just say our medium shot of this guy, you got shadow already. You got nice, nice, soft, broad day. If it's backlit enough, right? Because you don't want this guy getting lit up like a, a Christmas tree. You want it nice and soft. So you can do two things. Really. You have it so far backlit uh, that you only get a little bit of edge on this person and you can sit them anywhere along the bus. So you can either accentuate the edge that is coming from the sun or get rid of it. Like if you're parked behind this thing and you know, you say you were blocking it, something like that. And then you're just going to wrap the light around, right? Take the light that is bouncing in there. You could put a little poly right next to the camera and then you just wrap it around, add some neg this way on this gentleman. And you got a nice looking medium shot. And then you can go closer. You can shoot down the line of the bus to make it interesting. Lots of possibilities open up. And that's really what we went over in the Patreon group is how when, when people are close to the window, how to do it here. This is an interesting take because we gone with the standing position, which means that we can actually light from inside the bus because we use this person's shoulder here with the long hair. We use that to block a good section of the frame, which means we can get really close with the frame that we are lighting through, right? So you got whatever, a four by four frame over here. 
and it's lighting this kid up like a Christmas tree. He's got beautiful shadows, nice fall off. We're shooting into the shadow, out to the background. And now because this isn't front lit out here, we don't really need that much light inside the bus to get to this level. And then over here, you can see, maybe, maybe this is just natural. I, I would imagine they blacked a few windows here or something if this is actually outside. But just to get that contrast, it becomes really easy because you can now light from inside the bus. Hard to light from inside the bus if the guy's sitting here that close to the window because you want the light to come wrapping around. So unless you can get the lamp outside, like you'll see this in movies, they will put a big giant rig on top of the bus and then you'll boom out all like a truss system and then you will light from just above these windows. So you can be traveling and have the light come pouring in that way, right? But that's a big setup. Probably not gonna happen on some dumpy commercial that you're working on. So you need to, to make do with another solution. So I thought this standing one was interesting because you get these beautiful soft shadows because you can get this frame so close to the talent and it sort of blends in with the background levels, right? This is where it comes down to taste and your eye on the day going, yeah, that matches, yeah, it doesn't match. You can imagine if this was another stop brighter here that it would start to look real funky, right? It starts to feel lit. Even here, we're edging on the side of being lit. Like this guy looks pretty natural and this makes this feel natural, but still he's way lit up. Whereas in the background, you can see how quickly it falls off. Like this is what it does look like. And there's probably, you know, in the grade, there's probably a power window around this guy's face. And then you bring everything down around him so that immediately the eyes are drawn. We've got lots of stuff for composition here. Really nice looking shot. You got this in the foreground, you got the hand in the foreground, other little things here, just creating layers. We got our main layer and then the bus is just riddled with layers down the back and we are shooting into the L of the bus, right? Let's not forget that. Back there to create depth and then we're moving so things are going by. Just a really good looking shot and simple to do because you're lighting from inside the bus. So if you come up, you maybe you don't have enough firepower to light from outside, you don't have the time to rig everything up or you can't choose the path of the bus, like the bus can only go down one specific area. Maybe this is a suggestion that you can throw out there and be like, hey, why can't we light from inside the bus? Like, look at this guy back here. That's what it looks like naturally inside a bus, right? Not that good. This beautifully sculpted light. Okay, from there, he actually hears something. Ta-da, he looks. Now, come on, this is, this is it. And you're setting yourself up for a really easy over-the-shoulder product shot, right? Because we're on the, the shadow side of the face, if we come around here with the camera, right? Camera, body, lens, I don't know what this is. But if we're shooting over the shoulder now, we're already, you're already gonna have this little edge light going over. You just have to lower this guy's hand so that you can't see the frame or just raise the frame higher on the day. And then you're ready to shoot the product shot, the reveal of the hand, because we're gonna wanna see what he's looking at, uh, which I actually don't think they do in this spot. So whoop, cut back to someone talking. Oh, look at that, magically the light disappears. And this is what I'm talking about for, be careful what you see out that window, because now you can see this is all front light out here, which makes it way hotter, which means we need more level. And they've done the same trick as before. They're using this girl's head to hide the four by frame that is in this guy's eyes. And look at the same exact shape on the face, dark, depth, peppering the image with different layers. Right? Just imagine, like, again, if this was backlit, this would just be further down, which would make it easier. And when I say easier, I just mean less level. So you wouldn't need, if you could get away with, you know, in a, in a backlit situation, you might be able to get away with, uh, with a sky panel here, right? Which is nice. Run it on bats. Don't have to go too crazy. Whereas if you're going to go like an M18, you're going to need the putt-putt generator, you know, out the, at the back of the bus or something. It's just going to be significantly easier to go battery powered. And this is what you're going to get this sort of level. Now, if you don't have enough stop because it's all front lit out there, uh, that's when you got to bring in the bigger lamps, which just makes it harder, more complicated things to think about. The other thing to think about when you're shooting buses is just have a look on the tech scout, the color of the windows on all of those public trans, they're so terrible. So then you got a color balance to that, which is where the sky panel comes in handy because you can just dial in the exact right color temperature. You get the color temperature meter, you go all around the bus, you figure, okay, this is the light coming in, this is what we have to match to, and then you can grade it so it all looks very, very neutral. So, interesting bus solution, lighting from inside the bus, you can do that if you move them into the center of the bus. Harder to do, more rigging if you do that on the outer edges of the bus. Let's see, is there anything else in here? No, framework, boom, light from upstage, shadow, 
little bit of interest back here, hair light. Again, setting yourself up for a really nice product shot as you're looking back into the shadow again. I don't have to go over that. This is again, dark moonlight bedroom stuff you're gonna be doing all the time. So you just balance to whatever this light is here. If you can paste, you know, one of those little aperture lights on the front of this thing, you got yourself a little light there. And then this is just all about softness, getting enough level there that you can really bring down everything else. But that's a, a breakdown for another day. And then finally, this last one, only thing to look at here is again, we're setting ourselves up framework style. We're shooting into the L of the room, we're shooting into the shadow, we've got this hot light. Only thing is look at how hot this is, right? This is what feels, this one feels lit. This feels like a light or direct sun or something. You can see how soft it is down here, but it still feels a little bit crispy, but it's nice with the depth, right? Imagine if this was just a blank wall. It would be really flat, really boring. There's not a whole lot on the walls anyway, so it's not a super exciting shot. Old mate dumps the phone in the water, bloop. Again, framework. Light coming this way, we're shooting into it, creating depth, layers, all that stuff that we've always gone over. And then we come around here. Now, look at how much softer it is. Goof. Where is his face? Look at that. Now the light has softened up. We've got the frame right there. We've got the neg just over here, creating all this. We've got the backlight just here, just like a little tube, just like something like this, right? Just a little tiny tube, just to bring it up just that little bit. And that little tiny light to dark to light. That is the look of the face. And then we're shooting shallow, but again, we're shooting into the L of the room just to create depth. Got this line going, got that. Very nice. Then we've got the depth of the window behind the dark side of his head. All those things work to make a really nice image. So nice basic ad. I just wanted to get it up there to show the different option for people that are Patreon members that have seen the old bus work that we've, we've been looking at. This is a different take on it, right? You're just lighting from inside the bus, which is a very quick and easy solution that I hadn't... Uh, Hadn't done before, but I will definitely be suggesting that on the next project. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any commercials that you want broken down or techniques or styles, leave it in the comment section below and I'll try and get to it. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.